So it's the beginning of June. We've been trying to put together this walkthrough video for you of an update on the gardens and have been interrupted by a lot of different things. So um, today we are determined to get this in before it rains. Um, we may be piecing together a few clips from um, some video that we took that we were only able to use part of. So we're going to show you today where our gardens are at, how they're going, our successes, our challenges this year, and um, then just kind of let you see where we're at. Okay, so here we are at our herb garden and the first box that we have is lemon balm. Now, lemon balm is in a box here because very much like the rest of mint family type herbs, it has a tendency to grow outside its boundaries. So for us, we use this um, dried mostly, but you can use it dehydrated, you can use it fresh, uh, we make tea with it. Uh, you can use it just if you want a lemony, fresh taste in your water. Um, just take a few pieces, uh, crush them up a little bit, put them in your water, and it gives that nice lemony taste. Um, if you were to pick a piece and rub it between your fingers, it smells kind of like a lemon drop candy. So it has a lot of uses. You can use it by itself. You can mix it in with other um, uh, herbs to make different flavored teas. Um, we do sometimes put this in with our cold and flu tea that we'll be making this fall and it adds that nice lemony zing to it. All right, so next we have in its own box our mint and again mint has a tendency to kind of take over an area which is why we put it in a box it helps keep it contained um, you may notice around the outside of the mint I've got some radishes planted the mint is great again used fresh um, to garnish a drink or some food it's also great if you dehydrate it and save it for later um, you can use it in a lot of different teas it's really really a great addition to have in your herb garden all right, so here in this bed we have our rosemary. And this rosemary plant we had in our garden last year. We brought it in over the winter and brought it back out in the spring. And it actually had a ton of little flowers on it this year and it's doing really well, so we're happy. I'm not sure if we're gonna bring it in again this fall or if we're gonna try to winterize it um, to make it hold over the winter. But rosemary is great in the kitchen. If you um, cook chicken, if you use rosemary a lot, um, and we use it in a lot of the different things that we make as well. Again, it's another one of those herbs that you can use fresh or you can dehydrate it and save it for later. And this is our lavender. So for us, the lavender is used to make um, tinctures some like essential oils um, lavender is also great if you want to make lavender sachets it's a very relaxing scent um, I do also sometimes have the lavender to use in my teas so there's a lot of different uses for it um, look it up on the web there's a ton of different ideas on what you can use lavender for and the flowers when they come out are beautiful And this is our cilantro, and we'll be using that for making some salsa this fall. Um, we'll pick it throughout the season, and we'll dehydrate it and save it for when we're ready to make our salsa, when all our tomatoes and peppers and onions and everything are ready from the garden. Okay, so here is an update on our potatoes. As you can see, we've mounded them up now um, actually twice and they are starting to bloom. So we have some beautiful blossoms at the top and we're almost ready to put another mounding up of the straw onto the potatoes. And as you can see, they're really, really taking off and growing like crazy. So we're super excited to see what we get for our harvest this fall on the potatoes. All right, so here we are at our bed that has all our onions and garlic. So first off, we have our green onions. And as you can see, the purple flowers on top 
are actually starting to pass. Um, and the green onions we just cut as they grow and they're awesome to use when you're cooking and you want that nice green onion flavor. You can also cut them, dehydrate them and use them later if you want to. And in this same bed, we also have our red onions and our bunching onions. The bunching onions are a white onion. Um, it's a lot smaller. They grow in groups of uh, clusters of onions. And um, you can just replant a couple of them and they'll come back again next year. The red onions we use a lot of. So the red onions we will be definitely... Um, excited to harvest this year when they're ready. Now over here to the right we have our garlic. Now this is a soft nosed garlic so we don't get the garlic scapes. We're really hoping to be able to plant some hard nosed garlic this fall so that we can have garlic scapes as well. Um, if you've never seen a garlic scape it is Kind of. I'm gonna come over here and walk into the garden. It's similar to the piece that's coming on the top of this onion. Um, this is where a blossom would come. But your hard-nosed garlic gets garlic scapes that are 6, 12 inches long and you can cut those off and use them for cooking just like you would use garlic. So we're really excited to be able to harvest this um, dry it and have garlic throughout the winter fresh from our own garden. So this is our rhubarb. Uh, anybody who's been following us on Facebook knows that uh, we've been cutting a lot of rhubarb already this year and giving a lot of it away because we actually have more than we can use ourselves. So rhubarb, the big thing to remember with rhubarb is um, for the leaves, don't eat the leaves. The leaves will make you sick you only want to eat the stalks. So as you can see in here, if I move some of the leaves aside, um, you've got your, your stalks. Um, there's different kinds of rhubarb. Some are super, super red. Some stay kind of green, like this one. Um, these are still a little small to cut, so we're gonna let them grow a little bit more before we cut them. Um, you can use it fresh. You can dice it up and freeze it. Uh, we do both and you can make jams out of it, you can make cakes, and you can make strawberry rhubarb pie, which seems to be a favorite of everybody we know. So this is our area where we have our corn and our pole beans and some kohlrabi. Uh, this is our first year with the kohlrabi. Not super excited about it. Um, we've replanted it already. Uh, the first round did not do well at all. Um, we've also had a challenge in this area with slugs this year. Uh, you can see the cardboard. You may be able to see the white powder and the eggshells. We're trying pretty much every trick in the book to try to eliminate slugs. So we come out every morning a little after 6 o'clock and look for slugs and hand pick them out of the garden. Um, the cardboard is supposed to give them a place to hide, so when the sun starts coming up, it's nice and dark and damp underneath the cardboard, and when you come out, you can just pick the cardboard up and take them out from under the cardboard. We're also, we've used crushed eggshells around the bottom of the corn and beans, and um, we've also used diatomaceous earth, uh, which again is supposed to deter slugs. Um, if I show you on one of the corn, you can see the little holes in the leaf of the corn. Uh, all these little holes are from slugs and it's the same on our beans. So we're hoping that, you know, with the new leaves are looking better, that we are starting to bring some of this under control, but the slugs have been a real issue for us this year.
Okay, so another example of the fun time we're having with slugs this year. If you see, these were, or are supposed to be, cauliflower. And most of the leaves have really been eaten off. We've got a few new leaves coming in. Um, and we're hopeful that maybe they'll make a comeback, but we've already gone through our cauliflower twice. Um, again, the slugs really took over and they have completely decimated the first round that we had. The second round uh, is trying and we're really hoping that it's gonna come through. We'll keep you posted. Again, we've tried crushed eggshells. We've tried diatomaceous earth. We come out and check the area every morning for slugs. Um, but sometimes they are just uh, ravenous and they just completely cleared out our cauliflower area. All right, so this is our eggplant or what is left of it. Um, again, we had a problem where most of our eggplants all got eaten off. I'm not sure if it was just the slugs or a combination of slugs and cutworms because we've been having problems with cutworms as well. So we have had to do another round and this actually on some of the cauliflower is the third time around trying to get this in planted and getting it to stay alive. This one's doing the best out of what we have left. Um, so we're just going to give it a try, see how it goes and we'll keep you posted. All right, so these are our super chili peppers. And the reason that we're using the chili peppers this year, and normally we don't plant chili peppers, is we decided we want to make our own smoked paprika. So we're going to be using the chili, the super chili peppers for that. Um, we had the same problem with slugs on the peppers. They're doing much better, so we're hoping we've kind of got that under control. Um, we're gonna have to just wait and see how that goes but we're hopeful we didn't plant a lot we're hoping to get a good harvest off these so that we can uh, experiment and and do that smoked paprika um, we'll also take the seeds from the super chilies and do the red pepper seeds that we can use on like pizza and grinders and that kind of thing so these are our yellow bells, and this is actually a second round of peppers that we started from seed, and they're doing pretty well. Um, we put them in this bed, and I'll show you the other pepper bed in just a little bit. Um, again, we had a problem in our other pepper bed with cutworms and slugs. We've had a few slugs here. It hasn't been quite as bad. Um, the yellow bells are one of our favorite and we'll use those um, just dicing them up and freezing them. We'll dehydrate some, um, but we also use them in relishes and that sort of thing. So we're excited to see what we can get. We've got between a dozen and a dozen and a half of the yellow bells right here and we'll show you our other pepper bed in just a few minutes. So here is an overview of our front garden um, with our herbs and we do have a section in the middle that is still just flowers. I'm still working on cleaning that one out. Um, our potatoes, our onions, our garlic, our corn, some pole beans, some peppers, and rhubarb. And we finally got our greenhouse moved. Uh, it's pretty empty at the moment. We did have a lot of our fresh plants, our seedlings in there. We started a lot of seeds, but now we've got those all planted. So right now it is our storage space. So we're hoping to do more with um, aquaponics and maybe some hydroponics in there for next year. All right, so here we are up at our kitchen garden beds, and this bed used to be all strawberries. This year we have it half beans and half strawberries. So here we've got probably about 12 or 14 feet of beans. We have a combination of a row of yellow beans, a row of green beans, we have in the center row some northern beans, some black beans, and even a couple lentil uh, plants. We wanted to give that a shot this year. The lentils aren't doing so good, but the northern beans and the black beans are doing really, really well. Um, 
So we're excited to see what we can get for a harvest for our beans from this area this year since this is a, a different spot for us. And along the outside of the two outer rows of beans, we have our beets planted. So we're going to see how they do here this year. So again, like I said, this is a different area than what we normally use um, for beets or beans. So we're giving it a shot this year and it's just going to be fun to see where it goes. We'll keep you posted on that too. So this is our strawberry bed. We had a really rough time with losing a lot of our strawberry plants over the winter. We didn't get that much snow and we did have frost heaves, which brought all the strawberry roots up to the surface and we did lose a lot of them. So we're happy with what we have this year, but it is, as I said, only about half the strawberry plants we normally have. And we, every year, have the fun of challenging the birds not to get the strawberries first. So because desperate times call for desperate measures, we're trying something a little different this year. So here we have our little fake strawberries. And all these are are rocks that are kind of a strawberry shape painted in a nice strawberry red and we put one at the base of each strawberry plant and so far this year they have worked awesome we really haven't been struggling with the birds with the strawberries um, we have done our first pick of strawberries this year and we have more that are getting ready to pick and we are still getting blossoms on our strawberries. So we're hoping to get a lot of strawberries this year so we can make some more strawberry jam this fall. Um, what I'll do is pick the strawberries as they come in. I will put them on a pan in the freezer, um, get them frozen, then bag them so they don't stick together and uh, save them up till we have enough to make some jam. So here we are at what is left of our spinach and our peas. This is one of the beds that was a real challenge for us this year. We had a ton of cutworms and we replanted the spinach three times and just it keeps getting eaten. So um, we do have a few peas that made it and they are starting to blossom. So we're excited to get a few of the sugar snap peas. And uh, we have been able to get some spinach. We've used a lot of it fresh. We'll be dehydrating some so that we can use it later in sauces and soups. So this is our lettuce and kale bed. And our lettuce is doing really well this year and the kale is doing well also. The lettuce, as with a lot of other things, we just pick and eat fresh. The kale we use fresh in salads, but we also dehydrate it because it is great to put in soups and stews during the winter to give you that extra burst of nutrients. Now in the back of this bed we do have a couple of the beefsteak tomatoes that uh, will get kind of large and those are awesome for making tomato sandwiches, nice big tomatoes. So we're excited for those. They're not quite at the blossom stage yet as some of our other tomatoes are, but they're coming along. So here is our asparagus bed and right now this bed is only about three feet by four feet, but we've gotten quite a bit of asparagus out of it already this year. A few of the smaller pieces we let go um, and they will seed themselves um, but asparagus is a favorite of ours love roasted asparagus right behind the asparagus this year we have celery which is doing awesome and we use that for the fresh celery and for the leaves and we dehydrate the leaves and make our own celery powder and behind the celery are carrots so this year, this is a new spot for us to try carrots. It's a nice sandy soil mix from where we used to have potatoes over in this area. Um, next year, I think what we're gonna do is turn this whole thing into an asparagus bed. So we'll have a nice big bed with lots of asparagus. But you can see 
it's doing really well with the celery and everything is very happy in this bed this year. So this is the other pepper bed that I mentioned when I was talking about the yellow peppers. And this is the one that has been nothing but a problem for us this year. Cutworms have been insane in this. We tried the little collars. We've tried all kinds of things. You can see the crushed eggshells. We did eggshells. We tried coffee grounds. We've used the diatomaceous earth, which seems to be performing the best. Um, to try to get rid of the cutworms. So the peppers are actually now starting to grow a little bit, but what we did have in this bed, which was kind of fun, was some tomatoes that reseeded themselves from last year. So we've got one in the back that is a beef steak, and I think the others are either going to be cherry tomatoes or Roma tomatoes, and we're just gonna be surprised, and we're waiting to see what happens with those. All right, and these are our Roma tomatoes. And we select a lot of Romas because they're very meaty and don't have a ton of seeds. They're awesome for making sauces. And we're really hoping to do a lot of canning of tomatoes and we want to dehydrate some and make some barbecue sauce and all kinds of things this year. So these are our Romas and they have beautiful little blossoms coming on them so we're excited we should be getting some oh, and actually we have on this one right here we have our first little Roma tomato coming so super excited that's awesome I got to find the first one while I was doing a video here um, so we're excited to have these and these are growing really well and we do have one plant here that looks like it may be a Roma um, it is one that seeded itself from last year. Again, we're going to check and see what we end up with. And then we do have one different one here. And these are sun gold. So we purchased these this year because we have never grown sun golds before. And these are a kind of an orangey yellow cherry tomato sized tomato. So we've got a couple little tomatoes on it, a ton of blossoms, and I can't wait to try the first one. All right, so now we are at our Hugel Culture Mound. So here's an update for anybody who saw our Hugel Culture Mound video where we first put this in. These are some potatoes that are planted at this end and they've been mounded up. They're red potatoes and they need to be mounded with some more straw, but they're doing well. And next to them, we have some mystery squash. Not quite sure which ones those are, um, next to them we have yellow crookneck squash which are actually starting to blossom. Uh, this is another area we had a ton, a ton of slugs. So some of our plants we lost and had to restart. So next to that we have, next to the yellow squash, we've got some zucchini squash. And then we've got quite a bit of zucchini squash in here. We've got some acorn squash next to the zucchini squash. I told you before, we love squash. And over here, we've got some cucumbers that are coming in. We lost a lot to the slugs, but we've got a little bit of spaghetti squash, one or two left, I think. And then this is butternut squash. And these are all ones we did from seed. Um, we did pick up a pumpkin for this year because we didn't happen to have any pumpkin seeds and a lot of the seeds we tried to get online we just could not get. They weren't um, sending and we still have seeds that we had ordered back in February, March that we're not going to get until July or August. So we did have to go in and get a few things at a local nursery. And then on the back side of the mound, which we reserved for melons and vines that like to go crazy and crawl, we have on this end is our watermelon. So we've got, I think, three areas of watermelon. And we've got, next to that, we have one honeydew melon. And then we have probably about a dozen or so cantaloupe that are all planted. We lost probably half of our cantaloupe plants to slugs and just replanted some of these this morning from seeds that we did in the greenhouse. 
And then last, but certainly not least, on the back here we have our sweet potatoes. So we decided to give the sweet potatoes a try. Um, in the past we haven't had a lot of success and we're hoping that this method will give us better success than we've had before. So we did go out and get some sweet potato starters for this year. So we're going to give those a try. But super, super excited. And uh, our hookah culture mound is doing really well. The straw and hay is keeping in the uh, moisture very well. We did have some problems with grass growing where we put the straw. Um, it's good, but where we put the hay, we have a lot more grass. So we've had to do a little more weeding than we anticipated. Um, it really hasn't been that much of a problem because a lot of the rest of the garden did really, really well. So I've just been focusing my time a little more here. And I can't wait to be able to show you in a video where we're actually having a little squash come out on these plants. Super, super excited. Can't wait to be able to pick the first one. So there's an update on where our gardens are for the beginning of June. Uh, we showed you pretty much everything. There's a few areas we didn't cover, like our uh, bed of oregano, um, but that's for a separate video because we're going to be doing that probably later this week. And um, other than that, thank you for watching this video and remember to thumbs up, to share, to subscribe, and if you want to be notified when our next video is coming, remember to click on that bell. Have a great day, everybody.